Hey there guys, this is my Rose, and I'm here to do the cutie marks. Well, um, trigger, I'll just spell it out to you. C-H-R-O-N-I-C-L-E-S. Yes, I can't really read. I can read books, yes, but big words, I can't really read big words. In any case, we finally have the episode where we finally get to see of all the main six stories of how they got their cutie marks, which is quite adorable. Okay, here it begins. The episode begins with Apple Bloom, Scootaloo, Speedy Bell, trying to zip line down the forest since the Tanzanian rope is too slow and they lose momentum and get bunched up in the middle. While frequent in between their cabana ropes, causing my rope to burn through. You shouldn't have done that, you know. My sister's planning to have her birthday next year and she wants to do that and... I might want to try with her, but I wouldn't know how. <laughs> I do magic, and I do all sorts of uh, creating, but I've never zip line before. In any case, the tiny tumble down and got covered in pines and needles and sticky bee sap, which is ew, gross. But they don't get their key marks, of course. While washing up the sap, they agree to spend the rest of the day investigating how other points got their key marks. Safely, as when they go on an adventure, Scootaloo is intently again. Remember the story because... It would ask as fast and tough, not afraid of anything. But I think our first story is from dear old Apple sister. Apple Bloom and Sweetie Bell ride a car attached to Scootaloo Scooter to get back a plenty of both. Suddenly, three rabbits are holding apples across the path. Scooter brings her scooter to the hole. It turns out that Applejack has been chasing these thieving varmints. Apple Bloom asks her old sister how she got a key mark to the disappointment of Scootaloo was rejecting and agree to hear the story. Applejack says that when she was a filly, she left Sweet Apple Acres to go to the big city of Manhattan. Manhattan. I get it. Maine, as in Maine and a pony's hair. Seriously, that's so lame. Most people, most ponies, it's fun, but to me, eh. To live a glamorous life with her aunt and uncle Arch, which we'll never get to see. I hope in season nine. Yes, there's a season nine we get to hear more about it. I mean, come on, seriously. We heard about the pears being a family and orange. Wow. Beats me when they're gonna do it, though. <laughs> Take her, take they take her in as an amusement for saying y'all, promising to turn her into a sophisticated pony. In no time, the scene cuts to a former dinner. A pony asks Applejack for her opinion on Manhattan's life. Applejack comes out and says that it's simply the van, and she lets us slip a rooster crow in the morning. Sometimes the high class ponies have no idea what a rooster is. It didn't serve an a postponed in Applejack's experiment, but there were only a few disappointments. Yeah, the food. It's ridiculous! Now, I only got to see French cuisine on magazines, but come on. Tiny, tiny food? Hello? You need to eat a big meal. And I eat like a horse. At least since I am a pony and a horse. Okay, differences. I've only seen how tiny food I can be from, like, I don't know, um, season seven? Oh, yeah, the episode. Or Pinkie Pie, and of course, Rarity go into that. I love it. And I love it so much. I'll probably want to do that one for Father's Day episode. Which next year? Right now, can't. Mm -mm. As she watched the sun rise next morning, she says out loud how much she missed her family apple orchard. Just then, she heard a large <laughs> bang and sees a rainbow stretching across the sky towards home. And she realized that she truly belonged to home on the farm. Gladly returned to the farm and greeted her grandma. And her brother, and Apple is probably somewhere being a baby with her parents in the back for all known reasons. Her key mark springs into existence of a trio of red apples. Yummy, but I like green apples better. After Applejack runs off to continue pursuing the rabbit, Scootaloo pressed the group onwards. I kind of like, I kind of like the story about that happening. Going to some rich relatives is fine and all, but it's never truly home. With the items there, sure they're fun. And sure, you'll be fancy and glamorous. But what's the point of being there if you don't close with any pony? Trust me, I know how that feels. I've been on the road trying to leave my family before I met Jaco or Dr. Raven. <sighs> on with the story. 
The crusade narrowly avoided colliding with Lesher, who was guiding ducklings across the road. She tells them how to be more careful and asks them if they're in a hurry. When they tell her that they're on their way to Kiri, but there's a key to Mark's way, Lesher says that she owed a key to Mark to Dash. Lesher recalled that when she was little, she was very shy and a weakened flyer, as usual. From her summer camp, her summer flight camp, after failing the attempt to fly through some close rings, two male Pegasus started to make fun of her. Plus, that is the most humiliating moment of her life. Suddenly, Rainbow Dash landed between Fluttershy and Bullies and telling them to leave her alone. The Bullies and Dash agreed to race the man who's the big shot of Fluttershy stand and another cloud waved the checker flag in the race. As they took off, she was knocked down a cloud and fell free, unable to fly to keep from falling a Beautiful swarm of butterflies gently carried her away to the ground. She had never been near the ground before. She had never seen butterflies before. She found them in the surrounding meadow beautiful. And she starts singing the expression, which is totally adorable. And I love this song, but I wish she could sing it again. Maybe in the later seasons. I would love it. Maybe she and Discord would sing it together. That would be adorable. And the little creatures sighing in a new world. She enjoyed it. But at the end of the song, there was a loud BANG! And, accompanied by a pneumonious expanding rainbow colored ring, the bang frightened the animals and they all run to the goat. Flush had kindly came and cornered the animals and discovered her inhaled ability to communicate with animals on a different level. They earned her the key mark, which make mark of three cute little pink butterflies. Cute, but I'd rather have her have ladybugs. Hmm, I should do a tattoo of a ladybug on my forehead. Mm -hmm. Um, Right, sorry about that. And, well, but also to some Scootaloo's annoyance. Since Flutter did not witness the rest of the race, Scootaloo wants to find Dash. Sweetie Bell struggled that maybe Rarity knows. Somehow they end up being Rarity's assistant here in their outgoing pursuit of the cutie mark she would call to him when she got hers. Rarity says that when she was a filly, she was put in charge of the costume during the school day. The Google Play, I mean. The day before the performance, her teacher called her very nice, but they aren't good enough for Rarity. They need to be spectacular. In her workshop, Rarity tries every trick she knew, but costumes weren't working. And she wondered if she dreamed of being a fashion designer dissolved before the very eyes her horn begins to glow and brightly drags her to join to a rock every right there in a large bowl with this issue and the as possible that rocks might have to do with her destiny. And yelled at the dumb horn, STUPID HORN! And she interrupted by the explosion of- <laughs> Exactly like the one that Blush I witnessed, the shock wave split the bounder, revealing a craven of beautiful filled multicolored gems. On the night performance, the dancers were wearing dazzling gem studded outfits. Rarity inspired, not to mention that her new ability to track hidden gems, giving her the key mark for three blue diamonds. Which is an adorable little story! <laughs> you like my story, though. And a few of my families. Although some of them are not that big. In any case, Scootaloo pushed her friends out of the shop, try tired of Rarity's Namby Pammy story. She hopes to find Dash and hear his most exciting tale. And the two encountered Twilight, however, and they ended up listening to hers. Even as a filly, Twilight had her knack of magic. After was a Princess Celestia raised the sun with her magic at Summer Sun Celebration, Twilight aspired to extremely study magic. She's seen her bedroom with a pile of books before magic for the first time when she's able to magically turn the page of a book. Her parents enrolled her to Celestia School for Give the Unicorns and extended them to hold the dragon. Well, try to hatch one at least, and under the scrutiny and judge, she was too stressed to cast a successful spell. Just as she gave up the apology for wasting Testament's time, she hears an ear shattering boom outside, and it's when it triggered the magic she's directed her being towards the egg, and the egg hacked, revealing a baby spike. How was she when they lose control, caused her eyes to glow, and then it lighted up the room, and levitating judges turned her parents' plans, pot plants, and make a spike and it outside, without the wings, of course. And Princess Celestia sees Spike's heads bursting through the tower roof. She places her her hoofs on Twilight, and Twilight would draw her magic, profoundly apologizing. Celestia says that she has never seen a filly with such raw abilities. She offers to take Philly as her personal protege or student to teach her how to control her magic. Twilight's parents eagerly encounter her with a big shake in the head, and her to take the offer. And Twilight's overjoyed and like it, yes, 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 like that type of attitude. And Celestia pointed out her key mark in a violet colored star of five smooth with white ones around it, just appearing on her twink. Also, she's so cute with the yeesh yeesh yeesh! Also, 
from a personal note here that I uh, that Raven put. Thank you, Raven. Laura found a struggle. There's more to Princess Celestia than has been the beginning of her series. She says that in relation to Avian and Flashlight, Celestia's sense of time spark was connected to the elemental harmony and, ar and um, arranged dragons hatch and catch for her. Celestia raised and trained and Spike and arranged him to highlight the system, which is kind of cute. <laughs> The Crusaders lead cheerfully, Skip and Twilight hopping in the car to find Radford again. And she was embarrassed again with all the hoppiness. I mean, come on, seriously. Embarrassing. Now, back to Shree. Pinkie Pie and Spectre applied inside their wagon, completely riding helmets. She offered to tell them how she earned her keyword. If they joined her to the cute corner, which the Phillies reluctantly agreed, and so that Scootaloo's annoyance continued. In the flashback, Pinky shown as a Philly living on a rock farm with her family. Outside the pony boat, according to her, there is no talking, no smiling, just rock day up to day. The family goes inside. It bond without any her, without without her, I mean. She heard an explosion <laughs> in the sky and sees a rainbow ring. Her color, she feels joy that she had never felt before. She was overwhelmed, wanted to smile forever. And even more, she wanted to spread the happiness the next day when her family had out to move rocks to the south field. They heard a muffling music from the silo. That's a big thing to keep in food or anything, really. Pinkie Pie back into them inside, and the mother called by the name Pinkie Mina Diane Pie. There were the pie decorations inside, balloons, streamers, music, cake. First of all, I'm seeing completely out of their element, inspired by the party. Experience face started changing, their mouth wiggled. And they finally broke a huge smile. Pinky exclaimed, I'm so happy. She danced with her family. And her key marked blue and yellow balloons appeared. Which I quite love the story. Back to the present. Key mark crusaders re and finished the story by saying, And that's how Equestria was made. Which confuses the small fillies. Say so that she will tell them her key marks are on the way home. Three bells showed Scootaloo that they just Pinky being Pinky, and the Key Mark Crusaders finally found Rainbow Dash, who was one of their friends. Having heard the Phyllis interest in Key Mark, Dash tells them that her story. Oh, uh, pardon me, I need to go check on someone. Have you cleaned your room today, Sally? Uh, no, Mom, you don't have to. I have to. You read a lot, and you never clean your room. Mom, don't embarrass me. Too late. I'm back, every pony. Now let's continue on with. Take a place where Fluttershy's story left off. Rainbow Dash and the two bullies, Pegasus, began to race. They were fast through the sky round clouds. Toward the finish line, Rainbow Dash is already at the lead, and soon the bullies crash. <laughs> and Dash is bumping up with the other bullies. And then, of course, courage goes to her. But she catches up and takes the lead again. Then she tells the cutie Mark Crusaders about how she found the love for endurance. An extremist of gained so much speed, she was able to win, helped her beat the bullies, and most of all performed the ultimate trick that was only legend. And the Sonic Rainbow! And she ran over it and ordered her mark a rainbow color like them both. And as mentioned, a previous episode called the cutie that she and her first class to get Mark. Also, as the story ends, Dash and French suddenly remember here in a very blast from the story, and Emily, they had an epiphany. Epiphany uh, spells E P I P H A N Y form. And Dash raised lead inspiration that they all got their goals, helping them earn a key mark. They believed they were all destined to be friends, even before they knew each other. And they gathered a group hug. While Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle pulled reluctant school, it was like. <coughs> Ew! And then a group of their own hug. Fleshy struggled in their song and and Scudilla and Scoodaloo is crying like, No! By the end of the day, Spike reached Twilight's last report of how one connecting can lead into the future. Friendship with sacrifice a commitment about letters and sappiness. She simply was like, Just write it, Spike. And that they go, the story. Now then. What I'm about to, what I'm about to say is, I love this episode a lot. We got some fun stories. But besides, I'll tell you, my favorite one would be actually all of them. Because, well, they inspired me to be who I am. When I heard their stories, it just made me feel like, I don't know, we all have the same connection. When it comes to creativity and art, of course. When it comes to rarity, though, I like someone in the family, AJ. Animals, Fluttershy. Books, Twilight. Remember this? Let's just say I'm a big sport in swimming. My pinky? I am a party animal. 
But when I first saw the show, well, Pinky wasn't my favorite until I got to him. Anyway. There also, there was a, there was a Hogwarts poll before the episode premiered. Visitors of Hogwarts come for presents a trailer chance to vote how they think how Rainbow had earned a key mark. And the resort had no effect on the episode. Voting and simply guessed they were extremely accurate. Sonic Rainbow and Rainbow Challenge with Bloggerty's Bully Store Race, which she enjoyed. Which is actually came out true. She was really born to fly. Oh my god, amazing. Rarity Story was just adorable. Pinky was just, oh my god, so flowers and Twilight, And Twilight's <laughs> so excited. And we never, and we, we finally got to see all of them as cute little fillies. They were so cute. Okay, since we have a review of the episode, so for the here's final my key part. Mark. In our village, um, my sister got really sick. Unfortunately, she got a fever called Bat Pony Itasis. It's a, well, it's a sickness that. Bad ponies get when they're staying up too long. I mean, they still stayed up, but then, well, you get it from a certain germ from a cave. My sister went out, well, went hunting for night flowers to make her, my, her, her paints. She usually liked to paint at nighttime sometimes. And then she came home with it, and she was very sick. My mother kept me away from her room at all times. The soldiers were watching over me. It was like annoying at best. and. My father tried to reason with me that I shouldn't be near. I mean, I'm not a bad pony. The only thing I have my bad pony heritage is, is like staying up at night. Although I don't, I don't do that. I don't do that. I don't, I don't stay up because I need my sleep. And you know, I know I have a lot of dream abilities and all that. I may not like key mark and dreaming, but I did get a nail thread. But now I'm a mystery. I was really worried about my big sister. And I was worried about saying I was really worried about her. So, I, luckily, my father came in. She knew, he knew I was born. He said, why don't you make something? Make her happy, make her smiling and better. And I did. I made a, well, I would believe I remember, oh, oh yeah. Her favorite animals are considered to be tigers. So, I kind of made her a tiger plushy pillow. It came out really adorable. Except it had a pony head on its head. Have pony, have tiger. I know it was kind of weird to do it, but I was young, didn't have a lot of space. So I crept in to the room where the soldiers have fallen asleep. Go figure. It was during the day. I mean, bad ponies can't always stay up, you know. One day, when I saw my sister reading her book, and she saw me and smiled and waved at me. I came in and I gave her the doll, and at first, she was going to hate it because it was my first time making a doll, and I was 11 years old when I was making it, with my magic and all that. And and then I thought she was going to yell and scream at me, but now she ended up hugging me and saying, Thank you, thank you, thank you, my Rose, you're amazing, you made this, is this your first time making it? This is, this is amazing, really? And I was like really happy with joy, and as soon as she was hugging me in the doll, my butt started glowing, and yes. I got my key mark when I was 11 years old. I know, I know. I should have got my key mark like, when I was like 7, like the key mark was safe. But no, I got my key mark when I was 11 years old. And my key mark was a needle and thread with a little heart on top of it. And I was very happy with that key mark. I was glad I had my key mark. And then after that, I started shaking my butt out with my mom and my dad. My dad was impressed with my sewing talent, but my mom, no. No, she'd rather have me use my talents for dreaming, not sewing. She wasn't, she didn't like the idea of me being a toy maker. She'd rather have me be a dreamer. Since that was my job at the time when I was growing up. But my sister, my brother, my sister and father, so I almost said brother, sorry. At the time, they loved my toy maker. And then after that, as I got older, I got really good talented, and my mom really hated me doing it. And then you know the rest that I ran off. And you know the rest. That's my sister's key mark. I will tell her your first. When I was just a little, a little baby, when I was just a little baby pony, we were on a walk. We were looking for mushrooms to make a marshmallow, marshmallow soup, and all that. And I got lost. I was only five years old, and my sister was looking for me. I was really scared and crying my eyes out in hell. She hugged me and said, "It's okay." Hey Rose, I'm here, I'm here. 
I'll always like your way. It's all right. It's all right. It's okay. And then I should she hugged me, gave me that love inspiration to follow her. Anything else? Her butt, um, her, she got a hammer, and it was a lighthouse. A little, it was a little lamp with a candle in it. It was amazing. My father loved the candle, and my mom was okay with it. So basically, those are the stories of the Kima. So now, as in for, well, okay, I'm going to get off round this first. <laughs> Jaco got his Kima from writing his first story ever. And then when he was a little cult, he wrote this into a beautiful story about a, a little cult going on, going on a trip to the ocean to meet the ocean boat, to meet the um, river ponies and all that. He gave it to his mother, and his mother said it was adorable and cute. And then he got the W written on his on his flank with a pencil, and that's how he got his key mark. Was his mom really liked that? Cause it's a very awesome tattoo. I mean, very cute, you know, key mark. He was very excited about that. His father was not because, as you, as you know, as I told you before, some of my replies they were farmers. As for as for Crystal. No one. Sorry about that. Sorry. Uh, Alright. Okay. Sorry. Script. Okay. Mm. As for my darling, as for my little Sally Rock, someone stole a plate of cookies from my house, found it big, and some fresh chocolate chip cookies. Then she came back with a plate and found out that her older sister was eating the cookies, and that's when she got the symbol of Nancy Drew on her plate. She has skill in solving cases. As for my darling Raven, her key mark was her Miss Charlie was sick that day. Raven thought with her education and skills, she could help the students, she could help the young students. And so she went in, taught some of the young ones about history and science, a little bit of math, and even let them draw pictures of their favorite heroes, heroines. And then one of the, one of the younger ponies said, Hey, miss, you got a cutie mark. Yeah. Also, I have to mention this. My my daughter um, didn't get her cutie mark until she was about, I would have to say, oh, yeah, 16. Okay, I know, I know. Raven had a late cutie mark as much as I did. When Raven saw my birth daughter, remember, she my doctor. So basically, yes, Raven's like me. We both had a cutie mark at late dates. That's the story of how my family got their key marks. As for my mother, she got a key mark from well, traveling to a, a little place in Equestria. She traveled Philadelphia and explored its treasures and all its wonders. Then she created a map based on it, and then she got a key mark. And this was when she was about, I say, about 15 years old. And that when she became a talent for searching out treasures. Most likely map making. Her key mark was map making. Yes, my mom was a map maker. Then years later on when she married my dad, if my dad was a bad pony, she ended up being queen. Ugh, I really made it bad. Don't ask. As for my father, he was not much into ruling. He was more into music. Musician. When his mother was starting to lose hope in ruling the kingdom with him, with his father not there with them. He played music on his little guitar when he was about eight years old, and his mom smiled, and then his flame arose. So, I would say that's pretty much how my family got their key marks and all that. And I hope you guys enjoy this. So, see you guys, and ponies. I hope you enjoyed our stories. <laughs> Remember, subscribe to my channel. Bye. <laughs> Do 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 do